So good evening and welcome to this lecture about our guardian angels. And maybe some people here also like me think that angels really just belong to the fairy tale world and or something that we we have never seen them but we may have felt something sometimes and but can we really believe there are spiritual beings around us. Now that we are studying Martinez, most of us here, so he writes a lot about it. But for me, in my family, when I grew up, my parents were what Martinez would call humane materialistics. And we never learned how to have an evening prayer. But for Christmas, my, my mother would take a box for the Christmas tree, and it was full of angels. And, and really like fairy tale angels somehow. And also in the evening when the sky was turned red, when the sun, in that the sun set, she said, oh, it's because the angels are baking in heaven. And so this is my, my view of what angels are in a way. But then I also had friends, and when I come, came to their home, I could see above their bed, sometimes there was this little picture, two little children going hand in hand across a bridge, and behind them is this big angel with his big wings. So I saw this a lot, and I thought also it's more like a, like a fairy tale. But then uh, things happen in life, and, and somehow I think many years ago I noticed that it felt like I had some kind of secretary who was taking care of things in my life. And so when, when it was time to pay the rent or pay the taxes or whatever, uh, it was like this, not a voice really, I just, yeah, now it's time to do this and now it's time to do, to do this. And, and I felt really grateful about this and I thought m maybe it's more like, well, life is communicating with me. I never thought it was an angel and I don't know if I think it now either. But I think I also have a small Chinese guy who is inspiring me when I teach Qigong and Tai Chi, because sometimes I say things that I didn't know that I know, and even in this situation, having a lecture, sometimes we also say things that we didn't, we haven't planned, and we didn't know how to that we would say this. So maybe there are also some angels around here now maybe, to inspire both me and you also as the audience here. I guess most of us have had this experience sometimes that I know for once when I was crossing the street and I didn't look really carefully and I took one step and then suddenly I took a step back and a big uh, truck was coming in front of me. And, how, and I didn't really think about it then, but later on I thought about it. And some people say they almost feel like something is pulling them back in this situation. So that's also, and I guess there are so many ways the angels try to show us that they are there, but we don't always see it or listen to it. There's also this sometimes happens that somebody has a really bad accident with a car, for example, and the car maybe goes around several turns, and then the door opens and the person comes out and is completely well. And then in Swedish we have this expression, it was, he was guarded by angels. I guess you have it also in other languages. And this is also something we say, and, and do we really believe it or not? I don't know. I guess it's different for everybody. And, and also some people are, there are people who talk with their angels all the time, and they even have names on their guardian angels, and, and all the time have this help in their life, and when they have a difficult situation, they ask their angel what to do. I think that sounds nice, but for me, it doesn't really work like that. It's more like, I think it comes because I've for a long time had this feeling that life is all the time going through me, coming to me and going out of me. It's like this communication with everything. And when I'm in balance, this works well somehow. So I hope it's going to work this hour also here. And I found this 
wonderful children's books. Uh, it's called Grandpa's Angel. And it's a, it's a boy coming to the... I don't know if this is loosening here, like this is maybe better. He, he's coming to the hospital and his grandpa is in the hospital and he tells the boy the story of his life. It has always been so easy, he, he never had any problems and when he fell from a tree he never hurt himself. But in the picture book you can see how an angel is standing there and taking him. All these situations and also that he was really strong, he could carry uh, heavy things, but we can see what happens actually something that most of us don't see, but maybe we can also experience it slowly. Preparing this lecture, I was looking for pictures I could use to show angels, but it was really difficult. I mean, there are so many, but they all are like these fairy tale beings, and it didn't somehow feel right to me. But then we went into a church, and I saw this angel. It's, an, it's actually a quite small angel, and it was standing high up on a shelf, and it's made of glass. So the light comes through the wings and, and through the body. And this felt more like how I, I, how I would imagine an angel. I think like a being of light, I guess that's most of us think it. it is something like, and the light, sometimes we can see it, some people tell us that they have seen the light, and especially, I guess you have also heard some of those near-death experiences where people really see these beings of light, and they never really know how to describe it, but they say they are really made of light, and, and that they have this enormous love around them. So I think this was a good picture of an angel. And I also thought when I found it in the church, there are also other angels in churches, you know, but maybe because when people are in, in trouble and, and grief and so on and have problems in their life, they often go to church and maybe the church is really full of angels more than anywhere else because that's where people really need the, the comfort of angels around them. Then I found this picture. It's an Icelandic artist, Eina Jonsson. And Martinus visited him several times in, in Iceland and really liked his sculptures, and he has also painted. And here we can see this one is called Spring. And we can see how from this skull, like, like the, the, where we live, what Martinez calls sometimes, so we live in the zone of death in a way here in the winter time. But then the spring comes out and opens up from this, where the trees have no leaves, and then suddenly everything grows. And all, this whole process is guarded by this angel. It falls off all the time, but you can hear me good. Yeah, I'm just afraid that it's going to fall down my back. And then also he had made paintings, and I think this was really nice also. It's called The Angel of Light. It's also Einar Jones, and he has a museum in, uh, in, on Iceland where we can see all these sculptures and also these paintings. And maybe this is how we imagine a guardian angel with his wings holding us and that we can rest in the arms of this angel. And especially when we are in these situations where we feel maybe like crucified, I guess, this picture should show. And as I said, Martinez has written a lot about the angels, the guardian angels. I have some quotes here. And this one, in the real human kingdom, the kingdom of love, there are discarnated earthly people who are fit for and have a great desire and pleasure to help unhappy physical beings. Such guardian angels are behind, for example, peace movements, and they are behind the individual person who prays to God, and they can follow a person through the darkness of night and protect them from assault 
In this way, we are protected every day we live. And this is what Martinez writes over and over in several um, parts of his, of his books, that they can, can also follow us through the darkness of night. I guess this is also when we, are, when we lose the contact with God, somehow we can also get into this feeling of being very alone and have nothing to, to hold on to life. But it can also be a situation like this, in the dark night and, and in the book Grand Course that Martinez has, it's lectures that he held in 1955. It's now a book which is not translated yet. But there he tells this, this story of, of a man. His name is Ingemann. And one night he was passing through this forest at, at, in the darkness. And in the wood there were some robbers and they would have attacked him but they didn't dare to do it because he was protected by two very large angels. And, this, uh, and these angels were walking on each side of this man, so they were really protecting him. And later on, the robbers admitted this when they were arrested. But this man, Ingemann, hadn't noticed anything. So in a way, he was also lucky that he didn't have to be afraid about this situation. But this is also how Martinez describes that in difficult situations, we can also feel protected. And what he wrote in the last quote, that, that everything is really has guardian angels. Even our earth has a guardian angel. And, and the earth, in a way, is also a guardian angel for us, mankind here. Like we also are, in a way, guardian angels for our inner organs and cells. So the whole, whole world is, in a way, full of guardian angels. Here is another way he, be, he describes it. A whole world of beings on the spiritual plane is in constant readiness to help all the distressed and helpless beings on the physical plane. No living being can be outside this protection other than possibly because of its own misunderstanding and the consequent reluctance and protest. But even over such a be being, one watches with boundless patience and sends help as soon as its own reluctance no longer constitutes an obstacle and it itself feels that help is necessary. So we, I guess, in the situation where many of us have been and maybe still are, that we, we believe more in what we see than, than all these angels around us, then we can also be like, well, I can manage myself. It's like small children when they start walking and they can decide by themselves. Maybe we are also a little like this. But when we come into a situation where we really need help, the prayer is somehow built in us. And we'll see that later in a symbol from Martinus. Here are also some quotes from Leavitt's book, volume three, which I think are really nice. On account of this invisible host of beings with actu which actually surround the physical spheres, no living being can be cut off from its connection with the Godhead. These beings constitute the Godhead's sensory tools in all situations in which we cannot find understanding in our physical fellow beings or where these beings are not able to be the Godhead's rightful tools for sensing us. And this is where he comes into that when we, don't, when we can't talk with anybody else about what we are thinking about and our problems we have in our life, we can always pray to God. And God will always be there with his co-workers to hear us. So, and because he also says, sometimes the beings around us are not the rightful tools. They don't understand what we need, really. And here he also writes uh, in the same part of this book, 
There are millions of such beings that inhabit a sphere that borders on the physical plane. And because of their well-developed telepathic sensory faculty, they are a great help to all physical beings that find themselves in the situation we have just described. So there are actually millions of beings around. And they have this telepathic sensory faculty that they can hear us even if we don't say anything. We just, we just think, maybe you not even have to think, just, just, just sigh maybe. And I think this is also something that we more or less can imagine, especially this, maybe everybody has felt it, sometimes when the telephone rings, we know who it is. And this is also in a way a, some kind of telepathic communication. And they have this, especially that they can have this telepathic communication. And maybe that is also what happens when the angels try to talk with us and give us help, even if we don't ask for it. <clears throat> and here is also one more. Thanks to the existence of these beings, the intimate appeal to the Godhead can take place and will gradually make the living being or son of God more and more familiar with the Father. And that's what he writes a lot in these parts of the book, how we just, just have to practice the prayer over and over. Because if you talk with somebody more and more, you get to learn this person more and more. And the Father, he says here, the Godhead, whatever we want to call it, for me it has been easier to say to talk with life, that life somehow is in communication with me all the time, that I can say something and life says something to me. We can all have our own word for it. And then he says that this intimate communication then turns into cosmic consciousness one day when we are ready we will also have this feeling of really being one with God. Martinez has this beautiful symbol, which is called the eternal cosmic organic connection between God and the sons of God. And here we can see in the middle, the white triangle is one of us, a human being, or it could be any being actually. And the part beneath the black uh, stripes there, the first part is our, this being's uh, physical body. And the part below there is the physical world, because we live in this physical world with the mineral kingdom, the plant kingdom, the animal kingdom, and also a small part is physical in the real human kingdom. But then we also have the thing that we don't know so much about, the, phys the spiritual world, the real human kingdom, the yellow color, and the kingdom of wisdom, the green color, and then the divine world, the blue part, and the indigo part, the kingdom of bliss. And this is a world that we really, we don't, we can't see it and we don't know so much about it. Now we can know more because Martinez talks so much and writes so much about it. But then we see the, the bigger triangle in the top, which is the eye of the Godhead, which is always there. There is always this connection between God and us. And in this symbol, which Ingmar also show, uh, Ingmar showed this morning, he says that it's a pyramid shaped uh, uh, around this connection, but it could always also be like an angel spreading its wings around us. So this is really where the whole communication from the spiritual world, from the angels, comes into us also. He says here in, in the grand course about this symbol, that all our thoughts go to this second eye in the universe, the eye of God. And the guardian angels, they can either be, like we had in one of the quotes, somebody who is in between two physical lives. We then also go through the, 
the, the spiritual world bef before we come back again and incarnate in a physical body. And there we can be an, a guardian angel. For example, he says that a mother, when she dies, she can be the guardian angel for her children. But then there are also guardian angels who have passed this uh, incarnation and the discarnation, and they are constant inhabitants in the, I guess, in the real human kingdom more, that he also calls this kingdom the kingdom of love, because there we all want to just help and give to everybody else who needs help. So I guess those are the higher guardian angels who can also help the ones who are temporarily there between two lives. So there are different degrees of guardian angels also. And we can have here a text also. This is also from the grand course. You who are in heaven is not a shape. God is not a thought image. God is the whole. By looking out there, God hears through psychic beings who are very close to us. They have only the task of listening to the people who pray to be guardian angels for human beings. They are very close to us, he says, and, and well, because they are not really in, in space and time the way we are in our physical world. So they could even be inside of us because our organs probably also have guardian angels and all our cells and so on. And the whole earth, the whole globe is also surrounded by guardian angels. And God hears through this, here he calls them psychic beings, spiritual beings. But this is a symbol, he calls it the materialistic or unfinished word picture. And this is what we in our materialistic phase is what we see and when we, what we can experience. It's, it's not the light, nice colors that was in the first symbol. So here everything is a bit gray and, and a bit... Uh, dead, maybe in a way you can say, and and there's a big question mark in the eye of the living being, because I think this is one of the big things that we have to experience and and feel in ourselves that we are an eye, as God also is an eye, not this kind of eye, but the eye that is written with a with a letter I. And this is what makes this world that we live in now so, I guess, dark. We are in the darkest place in the whole spiral cycle because we don't have this connection to God. And here he says that one day you will become conscious in God. One day you will become one with the whole universe. And maybe sometimes we can have a, a small glimpse of this in our lives. But what happens when, when somebody dies? Because this person doesn't believe in anything else than the physical world. And, and the, when with the physical body dies, then everything is, is gone, they think. But Martinez is very, writes a lot about this. This is from The Road to Paradise. And he says here that people with dreams of helping beings in unfortunate situations will experience the realization of their dreams as guardian angels here on the spiritual plane. These beings help beings out of purgatory and in the paradise or dream, into the paradise or dream existence appointed specially to each of them. So the purgatory is, is a phase where when we leave our physical body, we have this, the, the common way of living somehow with us still, even if we don't are, have our physical body. And so that can be like a purgatory. That we, it's not that we are burning in hell forever, which, which maybe some people have learned when they were children, 
but it's really something that can be a bit difficult in the beginning. And there we need the help of the guardian angels to take away these dark sides in our thoughts, which can be uh, like all, all this thought that we have disappointments and, and depressions and bitterness and anger and jealousy and fear and physical pain also. The guardian angels have to take all this away, take away this part of our thought world so that we can really enjoy and be in the paradise that is appropriate for us, what we have uh, really an image of what the paradise should be that we will also experience with, with the help of these guardian angels. And uh, beings from this area of paradise also take part in furthering the granting of physical beings' prayers and helping them with their fate to the extent that it is possible from the spiritual plane. They are present everywhere and can often actually intervene in a physical being's fate and in an apparently miraculous way help them get over a serious crisis. And this is also something that we might experience in our lives that suddenly um, a miracle happens. And it is actually possible, Martina says, even if it's not uh, so common really, but it can, if it is in our faith that it can be a miraculous healing, for example, which we can hear a lot of stories about, but I'm not going into that so much. I just think also here, these people who have these near-death experience and they tell, they talk about these beings of light and sometimes somebody who is being operated the person goes up into the ceiling and looks at the whole thing from above and sees how the guardian angel goes into the body of the surgeon and into his hands and helps the surgeon to do the right thing. And this, I think, was a really nice uh, experience to have, to see that even the people who are very physical and have no idea that they are, in a way, uh, uh, taken into uh, the, the guardian angel is coming through them somehow. And maybe this is also happening to us sometimes when we do something very good and... Was that something? No, it was you? Okay. <laughs> okay. And that we then maybe also have this uh, a special power that comes through us sometimes in situations where we really need to help. And especially, I guess, in, in big catastrophes and so on that happen in the world, that we can suddenly have this tremendous power to help and do the right thing and call the right person. That can also be the help of our, our guardian angels. The grand course, is, it's not ex, uh, um, in English yet, but I think it's such a nice, because there are short sentences and, then, and he has nice things that he tells us. Through a materialization, a spirit can become visible and stand completely materialized and have a heartbeat, pulse, respiration, and warmth in the organism so that you can feel it. And this, I don't know if I've ever had this experience, but I, I heard a story from a woman who, she, she was about 80 years old and suddenly she had some problem with her heart, so she came into the hospital and she, in a way she was ready, maybe now it's time for me to die, she thought. But then in the, early in the morning uh, she woke up because a woman was standing there, a nurse in white, and she had white hair, and, and she was saying, wake up now, you have things to do. And, and this woman thought, well, well am I not dead? Or am I dead now, maybe? No, 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 you have to do things now. Come up and, and go on with your life. And then this uh, woman disappeared, the nurse. And this woman who had had this experience, she asked afterwards, is there... A, a, a nurse that is dressed all in white and with white hair and no, we don't have anything like that in our hospital, she, they said. And she, but she still had contact with this. She called her sister white also. And, and in this story, which she, she was telling in our radio program, 
she said she still had this connection and she didn't really know what to believe about it. But she felt that she really was helped by this woman's presence. So it was maybe her guardian angel showing herself to her. So maybe some of you also have had this experience. It's always nice to hear these stories. With all beings who pray, there is someone who hears what it is, even it is, if it is not expressed in words. Even if it is a sigh, it will always be heard. Everything is heard. It happens through angels who surround us. So even if we don't know what to say, and we don't know what to do, and we feel just helpless, we can just sigh and the angels will hear it. So it feels like, in a way, very, we can just relax and live on our lives, I think. Even if it's sometimes a bit difficult. And here's one more from this grand course. There it is then sorted according to what should be done and what should not be done in the individual situation. It is important that we ourselves can become so aware of the situation that we are in agreement with what God wants, because the angels only do what God wants. I think this last was very strong. The angels only do what God wants. So if if we have the karma that we have to go through something difficult and painful, they can't really do anything because they only do what God wants. And sometimes we really have to go through these karmic things that come back to us. So it's also good to be aware more and more about the situation. And maybe then we can even start to learn to thank for all the things that we experience in life when we know that actually there is always some angel taking care of the thing and getting the faith to us that we really need to grow to be real human beings. Now I have a quote from the Gospel of Luke. Gethsemane Garden, or the Garden of Gethsemane, I don't know how to say it in English, but... But there, Jesus, uh, uh, he was withdrawn from them all about a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And this story, I think, made also a big impression on Martinez, maybe also already when he was young. He has also written a, a, a short story about the Gethsemane Garden, where he, he well, what is, is important that he says that if it is your will, then I will do it. And I think this is also something that we should learn more and more, to have this sentence at the end of our prayer, if it is your will, let it be done. And this is a part of what Martinez writes about it. In uh, The moment we put all the perceived pain in God's hand and free ourselves from anxiety and fear, from the destructive forces of hatred and bitterness, a shining angel enters our aura. And God's present presence feels so intense that fear and sorrow leave our minds. And this is such a beautiful story also, how, how the angel enters the aura. It's like the angel really comes into us. And I thought I'd tell a story from my own life. I've actually told it before here, so some of you might have heard it. But it's still such a strong memory, even if it's 25 years ago now that this happened in my life. I, I went on vacation with my daughter and her, and her best friend. They were about 13 years old, these girls. And when we came to this place where we had a house, 
uh, they f figured out that there is a party or a music festival in the harbor every evening. And of course, they were 13 years and wanted to go there in the evening. So I said, OK, you can leave, but you have to be back at 10, because they were only 13 years old. So I thought, maybe that's OK. And they did actually come. They had had such a good time. But they said, well, we have to stay one more hour tomorrow, because at 10, that's when the fun starts. So I said, OK, so until 11 you can stay. And they actually did that also. They came back at 11. And, but you know what they, they wanted to stay one more hour, of course, because <laughs> <laughs> that's when the real fun is, when it's really dark at night. And so I said, well, 12, midnight, but not later than that. And so they went away, and I thought also, well, because they were so... Uh, they did follow my instructions the other two nights, so maybe they, I hope they will do it again. But at 12, I was still awake, of course. I was waiting for them, and at 10 past 12, they hadn't come, and not at quarter past 12. And, and then, you know, what happens is started in my heart, oh, all the things that can happen, oh, God. And please, please protect them and let them not have too much trouble. And, and if it's really necessary that they have some problems or, or get into a difficult situations, but please, please let, help them. And, and I was really very upset and I cried and, and I never, I've never been so desperate, I think. And, and it was like my whole body was shaking in a way. And then suddenly I was completely still. It was very quiet and still inside of me. And, and, and I looked at my body and, and it was like a very thin layer of fire or light around my whole body, like very fine flames of light. And I was wondering, why did this happen to me? I was asking for protection for them. But then sometime, somehow I understood that it was really me that needed to be protected. So in a way, I felt really calm. And I went to bed. I can't believe it now, but I did. And I fell asleep. And maybe around 2, I heard them open the door. And they came in, and they were so happy. They had had such a good time. They had met two boys and gone home with them, and, and, but nothing had happened, really. Uh, only good things. So I was so happy for them. I couldn't really say something about this, that they were so late. But this experience, when it happened, I didn't really think about this uh, Gethsemane garden. But then later on, when I've read this story a few times, Maybe this is what happened when I was so desperate somehow that the angel somehow entered me and was somehow the light around me. So I'm really grateful and thankful for this experience. And I think I've never, after this, have been so desperate in a situation. It felt like everything is the way it should be. And I think this is the mantra we should really try to live more and more with it. Everything is as it should be. And my daughter, of course, we can also talk about this, that the terrestrial parent principle is thus, thus in actual fact, merely a feeble reflection of the superterrestrial parent principle appearing here the super-terrestrial parent principle. And the big parent is probably God, I guess. But then we are also, we are also the parents who are, in a way, the guardian angels for our children. And we are also, like I said before, the guardian angels of our inner organs and cells and so on. Like the earth, the the globe is also, in a way, the guardian angel for us. Like, everybody is really a guardian angel for everything else. And this parent principle is like a, really like a principle. And we have this symbol also, the animal and human thought climates. And here, it's actually only this one thing that I want to talk about, this is our development from animal kingdom into the earth, uh, earth 
human situation where we are people here, not humans, but not really real humans yet, because that comes later. But this physical, high psychic magic, he calls it, it is through this providence that the Godhead controls and guides the evolution of the whole of mankind, its entire transformation from animal into human being. The cosmic or spiritual co-workers of these beings are called angels. And this thing that Martinez calls providence are really beings who have cosmic consciousness, who are in this part of the symbol up here, and who have the possibility to see what we need here on Earth, all of us and also we as a mankind. And then these providence, with, to which I guess Martinez also belongs now, they have these co-workers. Like we can also be co-workers here, but they have also, and maybe we can also be called angels here actually, are we that are co-workers here. And he writes more about this, that they can, they have this psychic force that they can have this miraculous healing and materialization and dematerialization, telepathy and organic clairvoyance, all these possibilities, which we are also in a way developing more and more the further we go in, in our development. And here is a quote also from this symbol. By virtue of their great psychic gifts, they can hear the prayers of physical human beings. They cannot free people from their karma, but they can, to a great extent, help those who pray earnestly in their hour of need and give them courage, energy, and encouragement to get through their sufferings. They are invisibly present everywhere. No human beings are ever outside their reach. They follow us all on our way, ready to protect us in those situations where we can be protected, and to help us in those situations where we must of necessity go through our dark karma. So he says this over and over again, that they are always there, they are always around us, and they are always ready as soon as we need this help. And that is what Martinez also said, that we should really direct our prayer directly to God, not to these uh, guardian angels or to other spiritual beings, but really directly to God. And then God will direct the energy through the right guardian angels or the right uh, spiritual beings to get us the help that is the best help for us. Because the one who has a re really big view of our lives is the one who knows the best way for us. So sometimes we really have to go through a dark karma. And sometimes we can be helped through this uh, and get energy and, and possibilities to take this very dark karma sometimes. So he says actually then that this is the most important, our Father who art in heaven. This is the way we should direct our prayer. And he says also we should always pray even if we don't believe in it, which is not so easy because then you just think it's something that doesn't matter. But the more we pray, the more we will feel that we do get connected to God somehow and that we have this connection to life in a whole other way. And I will finish with this symbol, which I think is such a nice way to feel the Godhead and the light and the love that goes out through the whole universe, that we can always, in a way, maybe stand, i do it now, and have this above us and behind us and inside of us. 
and to feel more and more that we are really a part of the whole universe, a part of God. So I hope you will have a nice evening and thank you for listening. Yeah.